Okay, and the final result is that after a little bit of experimentation, it became pretty easy to replace all the keys on a new, like 2013, as of 2013, uh, what is this called, Magic Keyboard, Wireless Keyboard. This is my first Mac product, and uh, about the only silly thing which you can see here is that after you remap your uh, keyboard to Dvorak, your little home row uh, keys are no longer anywhere near the home row. Um, this is not that big of a deal. Something I was going to mention in my previous video, you see I showed you how to remove the non-function keys, um, and I said that diagonal pressure along uh, pressure along the diagonal axis pulling up from the top corner and popping that direction, and that direction was the easiest way to remove these keys. These are not anchored in the same way, I don't think, uh, because I tried it on this most useless of keys, the um, escape key. And these are actually not that easy to manipulate because they're so thin. So if you, for whatever reason, wanted to remove one of these, you need to lose, use your little spudger. And the orientation of this scissor assembly is not the same. And actually, when these come out, when they come out, sometimes the whole, oops, sorry, sometimes the whole scissor assembly comes off with it, which is not a big deal. <laughs> and you see here, as compared to the ones I just showed you, the orientation of these keys is 90 degrees, so these are the two little holes, and this is the mounting point. Also, you can see this small key came out, but the uh, actual scissor mechanism remained attached. It's pretty easy to remove this. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but all you need to do is get in here with some sort of a small small spudging device and pop I'm gonna try to do this in front of the camera and pop this lower plastic assembly off again we remember that diagonal pressure worked the best perhaps this will work well here as well Although I don't really want to wreck this key useless though it is Okay, so you saw there, I was able to pop off, oops, maybe you didn't see, but I was able to pop off this top part of the scissor, which is this little uh, eyeballs part, and then the bottom has these little things. And again, just to remount this, actually not that difficult, make sure that it's right side up, meaning that these pins will go um, up when it's activated, so I flipped it. You start by pulling this into place. The lower catch has to, oops, I have this upside down. That's how you can test it. The lower catch has to go down when it's lifted. And that hooks into this lower part here. Okay, the lower part is hooked on. And now the little slightly tricky part is pushing down 
so that the top pins line up again. So you see, oops, the scissors is in, the mechanism is in, and to remount the key, it's just like I mentioned before, uh, make sure you have it lined up, gently put the lower part in first, and then just assertively push straight down, and hopefully it should line back up. There you go. And so, that stupid aside, aside, this now works, or at least hope it does, yes it does, and you now have a Forjak mapped Mac keyboard. Overall this project should not take you more than uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, and uh, there you go.